What's going on guys? So today we're gonna to be breaking down trading you in depth in under 10 minutes. So by the end of this video, you'll be able to start trading like an absolute pro with the right tools that we use in this video. So get ready and let's get straight into it. So the first thing you're gonna notice when you get into trading view is you're gonna see a market summary here on the dashboard and all the different types of markets here along with community ideas, et cetera, as you keep scrolling. On the top, you're gonna to see products where you'll be able to get access to super charts. This is where you're gonna be able to mark up your charts. You have also screeners, which gives you access to ETFs, bonds, cryptos, and also different type of DEX pairs. Then you have calendars, which the economic calendar for me is one of the most important things here because it gives me an idea of what's gonna happen with fundamentals and sentiment. You have a news flow, yield curve, options, all these different types of features here that you'll be able to use. Then you have the community section with trade ideas and indicators. We do have free indicators that we actually give out to people in our free community. So if you want access to that, all you gotta do is message us or go into our free chat. Then you have access to the markets right here, the different countries, the different types of news events as well, and also the different asset classes all right here. You have the brokers and trading view is really cool because you could actually connect different types of brokers here in different markets in the trading space. So you could do that right here as well. And then you have the download section and just company information right here on the right. You'll see the watch list with details, the different types of alerts. If you're setting an alert when it comes to trading, also a chat box. Not too many people use that though. And then you also have, okay, screeners, the economic calendar that you could always look at and take a look at and make sure you're prepared for all the products there and whichever one you want saved on the right section, you can do that there, the community and the chat assistant. So what we're going to do is we're going to go straight into super charts and then break that down. Now, the great thing about super charts here, as we're going into super charts, what you'll be able to see is you'll be able to see your profile here at the top left. Uh, you'll have the home page, health center. You could make it a dark theme or a light theme. For me, I'm just going to keep it dark. Just to be honest, I really do like it. And then your drawing panel, if you want to check that out, which is this panel right here, or if you want to kind of hide it. And then obviously you can get the desktop app and sign in. I would recommend creating an account. It takes less than, okay, two minutes. And then from there, you'll be able to start making sure that all your trades are being saved. Okay, here is the dashboard where you could look at different symbols. Okay, let's say if you wanna look at gold, you can look at gold. You can look at different types of commodities, stocks, funds, futures, Forex, whichever it is. If you're looking at just specific cryptos, you can look into BTC and also the different brokers and data feeds that you're getting them from. Just remember this, this is a quick tip. Different data feeds have different price action. So sometimes your broker that you're using will have a different data feed compared to the one, let's say Coinbase or Binance. They might be slightly off. Just make sure you're using the one that is closest to the data feed in your broker, okay? Now you also have indices, bonds, and also different types of other pairs as well. Okay, so in this situation, we're gonna choose gold here on a Wanda. Now, if we're using gold on a Wanda, it's gonna be super simple to use. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go right here and I'll show you guys the different time frames. So you have different time frames all the way from the one minute, one hour, four hour, okay, 12 hour. If you wanna be able to use these, it's very simple. All they do is give you the different candlestick time zones. So obviously one candlestick represents right here one hour, and then we can go into the four hour. Uh, obviously this is really good for analysis because I do a top down analysis, but if you wanna add a custom interval, all you gotta do is click right here, and then you'll be able to start going into this section and add, let's say, a seven minute or a 30 second, whichever one. If you have the premium service, you'll be able to actually add more, uh, which is beneficial here as well. So let's go over here, and also you could change the type of candlesticks, you could have like a hollow candlesticks. Uh, you could also change it into an area like line graph. Uh, some people do this for structure uh, temporarily, or let's say you have a different strategy with uh, Hakinashi uh, candles as well. Some people use that. Uh, for me, I just like to keep it with candlesticks. Now indicators, this is a really good thing to use. Uh, you could obviously favor your ones. You can create your own script ones, have an invite only. Like I said, we're gonna give you guys some free indicators you'll be able to use. All you gotta do is message us about it. Then also technicals, uh, technical indicators, and then financial ones. So one that I'm going to do right now, just here is a very popular one. It's called RSI or the Relative Strength Index. What it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up right here at the bottom. Okay, and if you want to delete it, all you gotta do is go to here to the right to delete it. Or if you want to actually edit it, all you gotta do is click on the indicator. Okay, you can look at which visibility or time frames you want it on, the different style and start changing the colors here and also the length on it at any moment in time as well. You could set it back to default as well. 
And then if you don't want it to show, you could actually have it removed as well at any moment and it'll be popping up right here. Now, what I also recommend is, uh, like I said, to also look at indicator templates. And if you wanna create an alert, this is where you can kind of set, set different type of trade alerts. So a great example is here, like let's say I'm looking at gold. Let's say at this price point, I want to potentially sell gold. Okay, I can create an alert here. Uh, and the moment that price crosses that area, potentially I can actually set an alert and I'll be alerted when price point crosses that area, right? So super simple. Uh, then I, I like to use this a lot just so look at take profits, stop losses, or set my stop loss there. Replay is really cool. This is for a paid member feature, I'm pretty sure. Let's say we were back testing a potential sell in this area. I could just replay this candle right here, and I believe that price is going to sell off here in this area. Really, really good for back testing or go to a random area. And then let's say I was going to put a sell or short position here. I could do that right there. Okay. And then extend to the downside. And that would have been like my position. And then I could test it here right at the bottom. Perfect. It kind of showcases to us right now. I have this at a 7x speed. I could put it at a 1x speed. I could change the time frame and then fast forward or go back at any moment in time, which is cool. It's a really great feature here, the replay feature. And then from there, let me put this out, remove this here, um, and then also remove this, or I could just clear everything. Now, as well, you could actually divide the layout into different charts. So I could put a second chart, three charts on here. This is really, really cool. It's a great feature. And then I could actually change this so I could look at the same chart on the same time frame here, which is really, really cool. So I could do that as well. Uh, for me, I like to have it different just because I like to have maybe a clean chart on one side and for me, the chart that I'm actually using and then I'm marking up on the other side just so I can get different perspectives here. And it's based off different profiles uh, and you can change that all within this feature here in the settings area. Now, when it comes to you, obviously your charts and your intervals, it's super simple. All you have to do is go right here and you could save a layout, you could have it auto-saved, or you could rename, and you can also use different profiles, have an unnamed profile and other different layouts as well. Here's a quick search. You have your settings here where you could obviously have the right symbol, the right status line, scales, uh, canvases, so you can like, you know, go in depth and start altering the chart in the background of it. If you want grids visible or not visible, the colors of the background, different defaults, uh, you could experiment with that as well. For me, I like to keep that dark layout. And if you want more information on that, all you gotta do is ask for it in my free group. And then obviously put session breaks, uh, the economic times on there. It's all modifiable, which is really cool. And if you want to publish, you can publish your idea, okay, and put it in the community. Now here on the right, this is going to be an area where you have your trade list, or I would like to say it's basically your watch list. So the way it works is super simple. Okay, you could have different types of lists. For me, I created one big massive list. And the reason I have this here is just because it gives me the ability to look back and forth into different, I would say, pairs, but also different markets. And I can add in symbol here at any moment in time. And I have mine actually color graded as well. So great part about this is it keeps you organized. Uh, you know, you could put different types of things that you want on the list. For me, I have it all color graded and then I have it in different folders. If you want to add a folder, all you got to do is add a symbol here and then create a folder right here in this section. Okay, super, super simple. And then merging folders and moving things is very easy to do as well. You could also color grade the trading list as well, which gives you the ability to go out there, like I said, and be able to organize everything a bit better. Okay, you have right here also trading logs, uh, alerts, uh, I have a couple set alerts here, and then also uh, the different chats all available right here, private, public ones. Okay. You could join. Then you obviously have the stock screener that you get access to over here. Uh, for me, I don't really use this too often here, but I really do like to use the economic calendar. Uh, it gives me an idea of the different types of news events that are going to be happening, both economic. You could have the earnings ones, revenue or dividends. For me, it's mostly a trend forex in future. So I'm using just the economic one. Then you could actually, you know, add the yield curves. You could have options, all that by just favoriting them. And then obviously that you have the community and then the chat assistant there. Now let's talk about marking up the charts here. Uh, in a very simplistic way. So what we're going to do is if you go right here to the left, you'll be able to see there's a cross, there's a dot, there's an arrow, and then there's a demonstration button here. So what you're going to do is you can keep it at a cross. You can put it as a dot here. It's just going to be able to kind of give you an idea of like what you're going to have as your overall crosshair. For me, the crosshair is the best one. You know, you could use whichever one you would like. Then you have obviously this section here, which is based on your tools. So for me, 
I would say that one of the best features here is you have a line chart, you have rays, you have an extended line. The trend line is very simple. This is used for trends, right? If you're seeing we're in an uptrend or if you're seeing we're potentially going in and moving into a downtrend here or another uptrend channel this way here. All right, so you can mark it up at any moment in time. If you wanna change the features, all you have to do is click on the trend line. Okay, and then go right here and you could click extended, extended to the left, extended to the right or no extensions. Sometimes they automatically extend. So my features are just like this because of that specific scenario. Okay, now you can use a ray, uh, you can use an extended line, horizontal line. Some people use this for support and resistance. Mine looks like this because I've gone over here and I put the line, I could change the thickness and the line style. I just do it that way because of specific things that I'm looking for. And then you could apply a default and create a default one. I have mine on default at all the time here. Now, what you also have access to here as well is the vertical lines. And here you could actually see at a specific time when certain things are happening at a specific price point. Let's say if I'm looking at the one hour time frame, I could see that gold specifically dropped, okay, at 9 a.m. on Thursday, October 9th, a significant amount here. Uh, and I could measure this actually. It was a total of like, let's say something like this here, like 4,700 points, which is one point. 6%. So I'll be able to see that and measure that. Could look back on my cross line area, parallel channels as well. I'll be able to see that. Parallel channels, super simple as well. Kind of a, a very similar kind of situation here with parallel channels. So they move a lot based off of what, when you're trying to look for a channel right in the market here. So what's the belief? The retail belief is that, okay, if it breaks the channel, breaks out of the channel basically it means that it's going to go to the upside or the retail belief is that it's going to go into the downside okay so you have that tool as well that you could utilize and then you have the back tool like i like to go back or move forward i just like to do that here and there then you have obviously pitchforks and all these other different types of tools for me i don't really like to use them too often but i mean hey some people like to use them but to be honest just based off what i do i don't really i don't really use it so Fib Retracement, let's talk about this. This is probably one of the most important tools that you could use. Fibonacci is basically the numbers of the world. Uh, there's this whole theory where, or not a theory, but it's a fact. This number is 38.2 and the 61.8. Uh, for some odd reason, uh, you know, everything in the world operates off of these numbers here. And what you'll notice is the market actually uses a lot of times these numbers as a way to what? As a way to look for areas of interest, right? Um, so the belief is once price hits 61.8, there's usually a rejection. And uh, sometimes we extend to the downside if we're in a what? Shift in trend to the downside here. The other belief is um, that if we break it, then that means we're going to probably head towards another Fibonacci level. So I'm just giving you guys an example here. If I believe that the price of gold is going to go down, okay? My belief would be that this right here would probably move to the downside. Now, do I believe gold is going to go down? Probably not. It's because it has a broken structure here. Um, but that's for another, that's another lesson for another day. Okay. So what we'll do is we'll go right here and I'm going to show you guys fib tra trend extensions. So let, let's believe, let's say I believe that the price of gold is going to go down. Okay. Let's just say in a hypothetical situation that I do believe the price of gold is going to go down. Okay. My belief, and this is the way that some people use the fib extension here would be that gold is going to go down specifically from this zone. And I believe it's going to go back over here to this extension area. And this is the extension area would align perfectly right with my, okay, here you go, right here, right? And then I'm going to have an internal buy zone right there. So that's how to use the FIB uh, trend. Now you have FIB channels. You have also Fibonacci speed resistance fan. I don't really necessarily use this. And some people like to use Fibonacci circles here. Uh, for me, I'm just not the biggest fan of it. Uh, just because to be honest, it's just not, not for me. But um, again, there's a lot of different tools that you guys will be able to utilize. Fibonacci extension and retracements to me is one of the most, I would say, important. And I don't like to overcomplicate things, right? Perfect. Now let's break this down, right? You have this uh, let's go into the next section here. Here you have now, here you have patterns, you have Elliott waves, and you have cycles. So the X, A, B, C, D pattern, okay, this is like a form of, I would say some people use this as like a harmonic tool. Now harmonics are based off of specific, I would say, give me one second guys. 
So harmonics are based off of specific retracements and extensions to the upside and downside. So the belief is obviously if this pattern here is created, it could be a butterfly or let's say a shark pattern, okay? Based off of specific Fibonacci retracement and extension tools. And then we would move to the upside here. That's the belief here. So if you use harmonics, you can utilize it. I don't necessarily use it too often. And then you also have the Elliott Wave, you know, tool here, which is the X. A, B, C, D pattern here, which is the belief that obviously we start breaking structure from the extension after that, right? So again, you have Elliott wave tools here. You have correctional waves. You have uh, time cycles. You have a ton of tools that you could use. Uh, I'm going to give you guys just the most important ones. Now, let's say I believe that the price of gold is going to be shorting. Uh, this is going to be a really good tool that you're going to want to use here. It's called the projection tool in the short position. I have it saved. So if I believe I'm going to be short on gold, let's just say hypothetically, I'm going to be short on gold here. I believe that we're going to be short right around this zone. I'm going to have it marked up here so you guys can see it. Okay. Uh, and then we're also going to extend and take profit over here to this downside here. So this is like a one in 10 trade. This thing is going to show me, okay, the amount that I'm going to be risking. Okay. Completely what my stop looks like. I think that's 1,315 points for a 12,149 point gain, okay? So you could see that right there, which is about 3%. So I'm risking about 0.33% for 3% gain on gold. I mean, to the downside, right? So you could see that all in here. And then you could also see the difference here. Like, let's say if I believe price of gold is gonna go up right around this zone, you'll be able to see that exact setup on there as well. The risk to reward, okay, the open PL, the amount, the quantity, all that there, depending on what you have logged in on your account. Okay. So what we'll also break down here is this. You have different bars, you have projections, you have VWAP here. This is really good. Uh volume based. I'm not gonna go over that today, but I do like to use VWAP and volume profile. Not necessarily price ranges too much, but volume profile I do like to use. Uh, you have brushes here where you could obviously draw certain things that you're seeing in the market. Then you have obviously the highlighter, which is the same kind of tool, just highlighting things. Then you have the arrow where you could obviously point things in certain directions. Then my last tool is going to be also my favorite one is the rectangle where I'm seeing certain zones of areas of interest. One thing I like to do is I like to look at the coordinates, but also go here and go into templates. And then from these templates, I like to look at extra. I like to apply different defaults. So defaults for internal structure and then external structure and then selling zones and buying zones. I'll have different colors. That way I can color grade them and just make sure that they're set correctly. Make sense? Cool. Then you have circles here. You could obviously use uh, to draw maybe potentially higher highs, higher lows or something of interest, triangles, polygons, all these different things. You have text here where you'll be able to obviously mark up certain different things and then obviously add notes, tables of contents, measuring tool. This gives you the ability to be able to have an idea of basically how long we are in a trade or how long it took for price to reach this zone here of about a 1.92% gain or a 7,574 point gain. The amount of volume it was and then also the amount of bars and the amount of time. So it took about one day and two hours for that to happen. So that's my favorite tool. This is a zoom in tool. Then you have the magnifier tool. This is just so when you have a tool, it's attracted to right, certain sections of the chart, but you're gonna wanna take that off. I don't really like that on. Another thing here is this is a continuation tool for when you're drawing certain tools. So if you have this on here, you could lock it and it, it's gonna keep you from drawing here. So you don't have to go back and forth with trading view, okay, in the charts. And there, okay, you have lock all drawings. You can do the same thing there. Hide all your drawings here. So if we have a bunch of markups here, we could actually hide them all here, or you could actually hide indicators and also positions as well all through here. And then you obviously have new new drawings that you could sync out with a different layout from the ones that you create, or you could just trash everything in there. At the bottom here, the last thing I'll mention is you have the Pine Editor. This is for indicators that you are basically creating. You don't have to worry about that, but the trading panel is very important because this is where you'll be able to access, okay, your trusted brokers and connect them there, and you'll be able to start seeing your positions right here at the bottom. Okay, guys, so this is a quick breakdown of TradingView. If you have any questions or if you want a more in-depth breakdown here, all you got to do, okay, is go to the free community and DM us and we'll be able to send you some additional resources here. So then that way you'll be able, okay, to learn some more 
okay, when it comes to all of this as well. And make sure you join that free group. And if you have any questions, feel free to message me or my team and we'll be able to reach out to help you out most effectively. So I appreciate y'all and I will see you guys on the other side. Peace.